Hi, this is Yannis with Ververica, and in this video we are going to discuss Flink's Complex Event Processing Library, which is an extremely powerful tool that helps you identify patterns and take actions and all these things in real time. So what is exactly is Complex Event Processing? So, Complex Event Processing, or SEP for short, is a real-time analytical solution that identifies patterns, trends, or sequences within event streams. This enables organizations to move beyond isolated event handling, instead connecting sequences of events to understand the bigger picture because events in isolation can provide a holistic view of the state of the world. So we have our input uh, data streams, as you can see here on the left. And by using compl the complex event processing library, we can define our rules and patterns. The edge monitors the input data streams and applies these rules and patterns. When it identifies a match, it provides output events that we can use and to trigger alerts and overall take further action. So let's try to better understand these things with some more concrete examples. Imagine we have an e-commerce platform and we want to identify patterns on our event streams. So what could those patterns be and how can we use them to provide meaningful business value? And here are five patterns I have defined. And all these patterns, when we identify them, we can use them to trigger actions like targeted promotions, uh, discount coupons, or personalized pricing strategies for our users to overall enhance the experience that our platform provides. So first we have cross-sell and upsell opportunities. The goal here is to identify cross-selling or upselling opportunities by detecting when a user shows interest in products from multiple categories. Then we have high value card abandonment detection. The goal here is to identify potential card abandonment for high value items. Because for example, if we have a card that is of low value like 10 or $20, we might be okay with that. But for high value ones, who might want to take more targeted approaches and send out discount coupons or reminder emails to encourage the overall purchase completion. Then we have the purchase intent scoring. Here, we want to assess purchase intent by identifying users who repeatedly view the same product, suggesting strong interest. Then we have price sensitivity detection. Here, we want to identify price sensitive users who only proceed with checkouts when the price decreases. And finally, we have churn prediction for frequent users, uh, frequent viewers without conversion, which means users that uh, are at risk of churning due to frequent browsing between, all, between different sessions, but without ever converting. So these are the patterns we're going to uh, see in practice. And with that, let me switch to my IntelliJ IDE. And I have my code here. So under the set package, you can find uh, a different job for every single uh, of those patterns, but I also have an e-commerce set runner here that, have, that has all the different patterns combined. Because we are dealing with uh, stateful applications here, typically uh, we want to have our jobs isolated. So, first, so basically for each pattern, we can define a different job, but for the, same, for the sake of demonstration here, I'm going to have everything together. So just a quick overview of the code here. Um, basically, I'm creating a Clickstream consumer here that goes and consumes events from my Clickstream topic. Here, I'm defining a watermark strategy, which helps me to handle out of order events. Then I'm creating a data stream from the Kafka source, and then I'm defining my patterns. And for the different patterns, I'm going to have a detailed explanation on the readme file here. But here, suffice to say that this is um, the source code. Here, we define the first pattern for cross-sell and upsell opportunities. Then moving forward, this is the pattern here for the card abandonment. We have the pattern for purchase intent scoring the fourth pattern for price sensitivity detection. And finally, the last pattern around the term prediction. 
And after I define all my patterns, my selectors and all these things, each pattern is going to give me a different data stream. So I'm running a union here to create uh, an output stream that contains the output of all those streams and create the final alert stream that I'm seeing here into an alert topic I have on Kafka. So we can take further actions and, being, uh, and basically leverage these alerts to take further actions. So with that, I'm going to go here and run a maven clean bikes command to go and create an executable jar file. And with that, I'm going to switch um, to the Ververica cloud. This is the overview page. And the first thing I want to do is go on the artifacts here and go and upload the artifact uh, I have just created. So I'm uploading it here. And while I'm waiting for it to upload, I'm going to go to the catalogs here on my Kafka catalog. Basically, the catalogs are extremely useful and powerful because, um, first of all, you can create a catalog from here, like Kafka, MySQL, or Pymon. And what this allows me to do is get direct access and connect with external systems like this uh, I showed here. And uh, I get direct access in the, in, the Kafka in the Kafka scenario, for example, to all the topics and all their metadata directly. And it had, instead of having, for example, to create boilerplate, like create table statements and specify the metadata and uh, the DDL, I can directly start querying my topics. And overall, it's extremely useful when I want to uh, move data around and have better visibility to my external systems. So here I have my clickstream topic and I can see some basic information, the properties and the table fields and columns and the types to better get a better understanding of the schema of my topic. So this is the, the topic we're going to be consuming. So with that, my artifact here is uploaded. So I'm going to go and create a deployment. And I'm going to call this, let's say, e-commerce SEP uh, alerting or something. I'm going to specify the jar file and I'm going to, to add here the main class early, uh, entry point, which will be ververica.sep. Let me go back to my code here and copy paste the main class. And with that, I'm going to click deploy. Now I'm going to go here and specify some things. So first of all, I'm going, basically when we're do, doing a stateful operation, a stateful, uh, when we're creating stateful applications, and especially when they're dealing with large state, the uh, suggested checkpoint interval is between one and, 30, and th three minutes. For our demo here, I'm going to go with one minute And I think I'm going to leave, actually I'm going to remove this that I have as default and I'm going to click save. Now, in this particular job, because as I said, we have all the operators together, this is going to be, um, this is going to be a large stateful application. And my input data topic has about a quarter of a billion events. So it's going to process lots of uh, data and maintain large states. And to simulate a realistic, uh, let's say, deployment here, for my job manager, uh, we will go with something like uh, four CPUs and eight gigs of memory. And for my task managers, uh, basically my input data topic has 16, top, that has 16 partitions. So I'm going to start with a parallelism of 16. And then I'm going to add uh, four task slots with task manager and basically when I'm doing stateful uh, stream processing, I want to start with one CPU per task slot. So I'm going to go with um, four CPUs for my task manager and let's say eight gigabytes of memory. And again, these are um, some rule of thumb I'm using, but because I might also not know the exact requirements, and I, I might not know also the exact parallelism I want to, to, you, to, to use for my job. The other thing I can do here is configure autopilot. And what autopilot allows me to do is literally it takes um, my streaming application and puts them autopilot, which basically monitors as my job runs 24-7. It constantly applies uh, some sophisticated algorithms behind the scenes and it 
generates different plans and selects the, the best plan that it, uh, it, uh, it thinks it's good for my job to make sure it keeps up, it keeps up uh, with the workload. So for the sake of demonstration here, I'm also going to um, use the autopilot. I'm going to configure it and just hit start. And this icon here indicates that uh, our jobs, our job is running on autopilot. So let's wait a little bit while the job is starting. And here I can also see the events while my job uh, is waiting to become ready. And basically, if I go back to the catalogs here, this is the alert topic I have. And all the data is going to be generated here. And because we don't have the table columns, uh, for example, you can see there is only partition, offset, and timestamp. We know that right now there are no uh, data in there. So I'm waiting for my deployment to start. It initializes the fling nodes. And soon enough, we should see some data there. And as you can see, as soon as the job starts running, it starts processing lots of records. And soon enough, we'll have uh, a few millions of events that are being processed here. So I'm going to leave this job running for a while. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go here on the SQL editor and I'm going to create a new script. Let's call it uh, debug alerts to go and examine my topic and the data in there. So let me copy paste uh, the SQL statement I have. And as I said before, because here we have the catalogs and we can leverage that, we don't have to create boilerplate, create table statements. Rather, can, I can just start querying my topics uh, immediately. So I'm going to run click debug here and submit this job on the, on the session cluster. And as soon as this now is going to end, is going to deploy a new job on the session cluster I have, and soon enough we're going to start seeing some data here. So this is what the data within our topic looks like, and we have, you know, the user session, the user ID, the, the alert type, and the value message. And we have different alert types like cross and upsell. We have price sensitivity. Let's see if we can find some more like cart abandonment here. So this is what the output alerts actually look like and we can leverage that to uh, trigger more actions downstream. And I'm going to go back to my deployment here just to see it keeps running for a few minutes now and processing millions and millions of events. So now let's switch back to our slides. The complex event processing is really rich in functionality and it allows you to do and generate many different patterns. Now here is where things get really interesting though. As powerful and uh, also with all the flexibility this uh, library provides, business are constantly evolving and so are the data needs. So the question is what happens when you need to change a pattern or add the new rule? because these are streaming applications that run 24 seven and downtime might not be desirable, right? Here is where Veras and where Vericas Vera engine comes in and it's, it supports dynamic complex event processing. So with dynamic complex event processing, we can basically change all the different patterns and the rules we're specifying on the fly. So we have our input event streams and periodically out of the box, it, it provides a JDBC connectivity, which means it allows you to connect uh, with external systems to support JDBC like MySQL and Postgres. Fetch those rules and update them on the fly without having any doubt time. So imagine for example, that the pricing model for your product changes and you want to change the rules or for example, it changes what uh, constitutes um, a high value chart. Like for example, initially it might be like uh, $200, uh, then I might want to make it like 150 or I want to make it uh, 300. So this is really an easy way, uh, way to update your rules on the fly. 
So in this video, we discussed about what is dynamic, compl what is uh, complex event processing. We saw some application scenarios in e-commerce platforms. We deployed the, um, our code on the Reverica cloud and see these things in action and how you can start processing millions of events uh, while doing stateful stream processing. We discussed what is dynamic event processing and why it's important and how Ververica's Vero Engine allows you to do that. So I hope you find this video interesting and thank you for watching. Bye.